there, my name is Emma, and if you're new here, welcome to my channel. I make weekly videos on DIY, upcycling, and art, so if that interests you, make sure you subscribe. I've been doing a series where I have been upcycling old Altoid tins into different things. I'll link some of the videos that I've done below, and be sure to check out the rest of them on TikTok or Instagram. But for this video, I'm going to show you how you can make a little koi pond out of an Altoid tin. I'm sure you've seen those really entrancing videos where people pour resin and then they start to paint the bottom of the fish, pour more resin, paint the middle of the fish, and keep adding details as they're pouring layers of resin. And then once they're done, it looks like a whole fish. I'll try to link a video below if I can find one so you know what I'm talking about. I really wanted to do something inspired by that. However, I was kind of nervous to use resin slash paint in that way. So I decided to make some koi fish out of polymer clay and it turned out super, super cute and it's still functional because there's still room to store stuff. So without further ado, here's how I made it. The base for this project is an Altoid tin. However, any old tin you have lying around will certainly do. I started off with some polymer clay. For this project, I'm using Sculpey Primo because it is super flexible and relatively easy to work with. I warmed a piece between my hands and started forming the body with one side being larger and the other side which is where the tail will be is tapered and then I thinned out a very small piece of polymer clay to use as my tail. I used this little tool that I got from Dollar Tree to make some marks on it to give it some dimension and smushed that tail right on there. I used that same tool to blend the two pieces together to make it a little bit more structurally sound and then I realized the tail might be a little bit too big so I used my exacto knife to cut it off. I thinned out some more clay and I'm going to be adding two fins. I think koi fish actually have four. I <laughs> was looking at a reference photo that only had two, but you might wanna make two smaller fins. But to attach the fins that I did make, I used that same tool to smush them in and I kind of adjusted the shape after I had gotten it on there because I wasn't super, super happy with it. That's what's nice about this clay is you can always move it and adjust it. I then used some more thin clay to make that tiny little top ridge that goes along the middle of the body and very, very carefully smushed it in. I did end up using the smaller side of this being so, so delicate and then smoothing out the little lines that I used to smush. Once I was happy with it, I went ahead and made another one, and I think they are so, so cute. I grabbed some new clay to make some lily pads. I rolled it out nice and thin and tried to cut my shapes. They're kind of like hearts, but with a more dull end. Instead of coming in at a really harsh triangle, they kind of have a rounded bottom. I started by making three whole ones, but ended up cutting them into separate pieces after I had them placed in my Altoid tin. Lily pads typically have a ridge down the middle and some veining throughout it, so I made sure to really emphasize that middle ridge and I did adjust the shapes as I went and create a few little lines for the veining texture with that same exact tool that I've been using this entire time. Once I finished them up, I started placing them in the Altoid tin and started cutting them into shapes that I felt fit and looked good in the tin. At this point, it was time to bake, so I moved my koi fish and lily pads onto a sheet of foil and then decided to make some little rocks to give extra dimension at the bottom of the tin slash pond. So I rolled a bunch of different sizes of rocks and while that was baking at 275 for 30 minutes, I sprayed my tin black so I could kill two birds with one stone. They came out of the oven looking so dang cute, and of course I had to test it out and see what it would look like in the tin. I love the contrast that it's giving. And now it's time to paint everything, so I left the rocks on the sheet of foil and grabbed some gray spray paint and started spraying. Obviously they were rolling everywhere, so I made a little basket for them, and and this made it a lot easier to get without them rolling away. To add a little bit of extra dimension, I also grabbed this khaki color by Rust-Oleum and sprayed that on there as well. For the rest of the clay, I'll be using regular acrylic paint in green, red, black, yellow, bunch of colors. I'm starting with painting the lily pads green. This did require, I would say, 
three to four coats. So be very patient and let them dry before adding your details of white along the edge and some highlights of light green. My koi fish were looking a little dirty, so I gave them a fresh coat of white paint so you couldn't see any dirt specks in there and then i started going in with a mixture of yellow and red which makes orange and lightly tapping to give kind of a scaly effect so there are some random dots throughout you can see i'm very carefully tapping with a super small brush and i did that on both of them making the marks on them unique i also took a tiny bit of black paint and added black eyes on them and i didn't show it but i also added a white highlight I'm using some E6000 to attach the rocks and the koi fish. Do this very carefully. The rocks are still kind of sticky because of the spray paint. Now here's where things went a little south. I thought I was being so creative and unique by using some clear acrylic paint instead of resin to fill in the bottom. This theoretically could be fine. However, I filled it in, made sure it got in all of the nooks and crannies. I did a pretty thick coat and this will dry down a little bit thinner, but where I went wrong is I got impatient and I put this in the oven after letting it dry overnight and it bubbled, it got super funky. You can see there's still like a, a gray cast around it. So I tried to make it look a little bit more distracting by adding some rocks and some specks of green to hopefully take away from the bubbly weirdness. And despite it not working before, I did the same thing again and added more. <laughs> clear acrylic paint because I can just never learn. Now, after that second coat, I decided to switch to some resin. I'm not great at working with resin because you have to be very scientific about it and measure equal parts. And I'm generally not good at that, but I tried my best and it did end up working out. I just eyeballed equal portions of the A part and B part. And then you mix the B part into the A part. Make sure you're wearing gloves and a mask because resin is a very dangerous thing to work with and you want to make sure you are fully protected. I used this wooden stick to mix them up. It did get very, very bubbly, but that's okay because we are going to be using either a heat gun or an embossing gun, which is what I have on hand right now to clear out the bubbles. So I heated it up with my embossing gun and went and added the rest of it because I did it in two portions and it looked pretty good and it did dry solid. Thank goodness the last time I worked with resin, it very much did not dry solid. Here I am mixing another round of resin to fill in the rest of it. I didn't want it to be completely full because ideally I wanted enough space for this to still be functional and store some jewelry maybe. So I did the same thing where I added it in two layers, but you can still see the top of the fins. I then left it for a few hours to fully cure. Once it was cured, I took some clear acrylic paint and coated my lily pads to give them a shiny look. And then I planned out where I wanted them before gluing them down with some E6000. If you wanted to, you could add another layer of resin after this step, but I kind of like how the lily pads look like they're sitting on top of it, so I left it as is. After I finished the koi fish, I decided I wanted to cover up the Altoids logo on the inside of the tin and on the outside. So I took some spare green paper. You can use any color you want. It doesn't have to be green, but I do recommend one that goes with the fish, either orange, white, green, or black. And I did this twice with a spare tin, so I didn't chip the one that I was using. Very carefully cutting it out, and then I glued both on with some E6000. And here is the finished product. I think it turned out so beautiful despite the setbacks. I really do love the foggy look, even though it was a total and complete accident. It closes really well still, and there is still plenty of room for rings or jewelry. If you want to use it and have it be functional, you can use it to store your jewelry, which I think is such an amazing touch. 
I actually really liked the foggy look and so did all of my Instagram followers when I was posting it. It was such a happy accident. However, if I were to do it again and what I would recommend for you to do is probably just go straight to the resin. I was nervous to mix the resin, but it did turn out all right and it's probably just going to be easier for you and faster in the long run. Either way, I hope you found this helpful. If you try it out, please let me know. Again, make sure to follow me on here, TikTok, Instagram. You know the drill. Thank you so much for watching and happy making.